Hi. Every now and then the stock market goes crazy. I don't mean just overpriced, expensive or too high. This can last a while. What I mean is a 100% full born wacko out of its mind. Once in the blue moon, a wave of wild emotion sweeps the market and causes universal craziness that infects everyone. And because the madness is everywhere, it's near impossible to resist. And those who do resist are mocked. Come on, don't be a fuddy daddy, join us, bye. Like when? Well, like the internet boom of stocks in 2000, remember? Before the Nasdaq plunged 90%? Or how about oil fall, falling to negative prices a few months ago because the world was awash with oil? Negative prices. Now, of course, there's not enough oil, so it's rising. So who was mad when? Or how about Tesla going from 200 to 2000 in a year? Because, of course, no one will ever drive a gas guzzler again, right? Or how about Zoom soaring vertically because in future we'll all be walking from home, never go to the office? And other dozens of fancy stocks shooting ever higher, driving the market to insane heights, even as the economy creates lower and lower because of COVID. Remember 2000? Today it smells to me similarly. But I hear you say, surely this time it's different? This time the Fed got our back and will always print more money? Won't it? Maybe it will. And if it does, then not buying Tesla is crazy because just like Tesla went up 10 times in a year, it can go up 10 times more, no? Or even more? And more? Who knows? I don't. I'm a simple semi-retired value investor with simple buying criteria. And all I know is I can find nothing that fits my criteria among all these high flying fireworks. Or maybe I'm just not smart enough to understand them. Just as I couldn't understand them in 2000, when I ran a value tech fund, could find nothing to buy and stayed mostly in cash until the crash. But maybe this time everyone else is smarter. It's possible. But it's also possible that the entire market again has gone mad. Everyone? Well, almost everyone. Jeremy Grantham, the legendary chairman of GMO, the fund's management, the bona fide Boston Brahmin who bailed out of the market in 1999, a year and a half before it cratered. He said then he's perfectly willing to miss the last one or two years of craziness if he's going to miss the losses. Better lose some clients, he said, than lose money. This year, just a few months ago, he said the same, the same thing. This is madness, he said, as he's out. He's been there before, he said. Well, so have I, and so am I. I'd rather lose an opportunity than lose capital on crazy stocks. Opportunities will return, lost capitals will not. And because I've been in the market for more than 40 years, yes, I know that such market craziness is hard to resist. More than 30 years ago, before many of you kiddies were born, the market was going bananas during 1987. I was the research director of Gordon Capital, the top Canadian broker, and the market was going crazy. Wacko. Every day a new all-time high. Only I and my research team were the Scrooges. In August 87, two months before the October crash, we put out a report saying liquidity squeeze coming. Why didn't we say crash? Because it was seen as impolite. Client understood. As if to spite us, the market kept rising, just as it is rising now. And two months later, on Monday, October 19, also known today as Black Monday, the market crashed. Why did it crash? And why am I bringing it up now? Because the current market craziness is, in my opinion, the mirror image of October 1987. The 87 crash was a meltdown. This one is a melt up. Two sides of the same coin. So if you want to understand today's market insanity, there's no other word for it. You have to understand 1987. What happened then was the birth of portfolio insurance. Some economists, economist inspired by the crazy modern portfolio theory said every investor can insure himself against the market decline by buying puts as insurance. Then if the market does decline, why buy even more puts? And our sidebar, a put is the right to sell your stock to someone else at a certain fixed price. So if the market falls lower than that price, you are securing the knowledge, you can get at least that. This way, when the market is soaring ever higher, as in 1987, you can keep chasing it happily, being assured that your loss is limited. But assured by whom, please? Why by the little broker that sold you the put? 
But how does the little broker insure himself against having to buy a stock back at a fixed price in a fast plunging market? Why, the broker sells your stock short in advance, just in case. The problem, of course, is that as the market starts plunging and you buy even more puts, the broker has to sell even more of your stock shorts to hedge himself. And this, of course, causes your stock to plunge even more, which, of course, pushes you and millions of others like you to buy even more puts, which cause the broker to sell short even more stocks. You got it. It's a vicious feedback loop. As a result, this idiotic theory of dynamic hedging created an avalanche. And on October 19, 1987, the stock market plunged into a black hole fast, minus 23% in one day. Whew. The blind mad panic that engulfed the market on that Black Monday was something to be felt, not just heard about. I saw grown-up traders turn white. Some cried as they imagined having to sell farms in grandpa's cottage that has been in their family for 100 years. Tough salespeople started with fear as they answered phone. It was like a wave of panic going through an army about to turn tail and run. This extreme fear was so visceral that we just knew it was the bomb. It must be. A day later, Gordon Capital issued another missive to clients, buy equities. All the above, by the way, can be verified. Check it out. So why am I mentioning this? Besides trying to prove to you I have some experience in identifying crowd madness. Because, in my humble opinion, today we are in a similar situation, only in reverse. On October 1987, the market was in a GMO meltdown. Get me out. While today, the market madness is GMI. Get me in. Who are the ones rushing in? Why? Millions of neophytes, retail rookies, who buy stocks via Robinhood on a cell phone click. A mutual funds forced to buy the rocket so as not to be left behind and lose their jobs. Or brokers who sell them the stocks without even owning them and cover themselves by buying calls. The result is what is called a gamma storm. Gamma is puts and calls. But unlike 1987, when it was a gamma plunge into a black hole, today it's a gamma blow off. A rocket climb into never never land where everyone is chasing each other's tail. What's worse? Today, this mad shindig is fed with free money, which the Federal Reserve Board, the Fed, keeps printing and throwing into the fire. Even worse, the Fed is also buying stocks itself to prop up the markets when they dip. Why does the Fed do it? Because, listen carefully here, the Fed's job is to protect the system, not you. Repeat, not you. And the entire system, the banks, the market, the brokers, must be kept afloat at any cost before the U.S. elections. Hence the gamma storm. How long will it last? I don't know. But one thing I do know, this market is a mirror image of the 87 crash. So just as the 87 meltdown came suddenly and signaled the beginning of a bull market, so will this current market melt up end suddenly and signal the birth of a bear. Here comes my mea culpa. A few hundred S&P points ago, I had said the market plunge has not ended. I was clearly too early. I underestimated the resolve of the Fed to keep the market rising before the elections. Where will it end? I don't know. But in my opinion, the biggest danger to guard against now is FOMO, fear of missing out. This is the time not to chase uh, rising rocket ships, but to wait for opportunities in stocks no one else likes and preferably hates. Stocks you can sleuth slowly and find things about that no one else bothers to look at. Like what? I already mentioned a few in previous clips, like gold, real estate, oils, overseas market. Take gold. Warren Buffett himself just caved in and bought a big chunk of Barrick, one of the best gold companies in the world, a Canadian company, by the way. And this after hating gold for the last 50 years. Or take real estate, Cominar which I had mentioned before, dipped about 10%. And within a day, its insiders who have been buying shares for months bought many more shares. And they are still buying, as are insiders of other REITs, real estate investment trusts. What of overseas stocks? One I mentioned, Vedanta in India, is up 30% since and keeps inching up as the controlling shareholder tries to sneak it to take it private on the cheap. But no one wants to let him do it. What of oil stocks? 
even though they're already up a lot, since oil has gone stupidly negative, insiders of oil company keep buying. There are other seeming disasters in the market where savvy insiders are buying. Some hotel stocks, casino suppliers, some data-driven marketers that lost half their sales and the stock fell 80%. So if they ever reach previous levels, they're going to have a five bagger. Next time I'll mention a few of these as homework for you, for your sleuthing and to help you resist the market madness. That's all for today. Let me know in the comment below what you think of the above. Describe, subscribe to the channel. Tell all your friends who you subscribe to. I'll see you next time. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching.